we need to be excited. So we're gonna take the opportunity to build this thing up. It's scheduled to have some upgrades over winter. So we're gonna do a full cage. Bye-bye. Just some testings. There's a couple of them that I don't know yeah, about. Like, like, let's stand. Are you making challenges? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Kind of looking forward to it. <laughs> kind of scared. Really. <laughs> yeah, hmm, yeah. Good morning, comrades. In tomorrow's vlog, yeah, already talking about tomorrow's vlog. Hello, Maximus, how you doing? It's a wonderful day. Well, short introduction. Yes. Ah, uh, he's going down the foxhole. Okay, go for it. Don't lift the foxhole. <laughs> nice, good one. Maximus always pretending that the downhill slope is the foxhole of the Nürburgring. He's always going downhill. What I was saying, tomorrow me and Tim are going to UK to pick up Diana's new E36, her new track tool. And to make this vlog a bit more exciting than just a boring road tour trip, meh, 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 we decided that Diana would come up with 24 separate challenges. And a lot of people are helping her with that, including, for example, Alex from Car Throttle. So it's going to be something very interesting. Why 24? Because we calculated that our journey going to be roughly 24 hours from the door of apex back to the door of apex so it's gonna be very interesting vlog i'm very looking forward to it and i'm very excited but a bit of uh, kind of scared and sketchy at the same time morning morning how's hey. life good, how are you? <laughs> not too bad good, good. how's life here yeah all good just uh, you know regular checkups cool brake pads all good everything looks good bushes look good suspension looks good Good. That's good. So this car is scheduled to have some upgrades over winter. Yeah, absolutely. We've um, right now we're working on some 18-inch Team Dynamic wheels. Mm -hmm. That way we can go to a 18-inch Cup 2, which will actually be better performance, look after the tire better. On the 19, you end up getting a lot of sidewall rollover when someone's really pushing the car. Sidewall flexes and it ends up wearing the outside of the tire. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you can see how that rolls over like that. Yeah. On an 18, the sidewall actually works more and mm -hmm. prevents the shoulder from rolling over. Yeah. So that's what we're looking for from that. It's just gonna give a little bit better performance. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do a full set of bushings through the whole car. So we already have the GRZ suspension, but once we add the bushings, it's really gonna bring the stability and the feel of the car to a whole new level. Yeah. And then we're gonna put in a, a cage. So we're gonna do a full cage, the car, uh pole position seats, and then we're gonna put the um, six point harnesses in. Yeah. So the car's actually gonna be pretty neat by yeah. next year. And one of the major complaints among uh, like all over the world is the sound. So we'll probably. I was actually thinking about that when I was up on the lift that we should talk to Gorilla. Yeah. And see what they can do for a nice. Yeah. Because if they can make the up sound this badass, they can definitely do something with this. Yeah, so I think that there's going to be a lot of, this car is going to be really transformed when we do that. Right now, uh, we've got the suspension really dialed in. The suspension feels phenomenal. Yeah. Then we've done... What's up, baby? The only thing that works is your hazards. Did you do the ECU remap. Did you crash it counting hard? No? I crashed it. Oh, you crashed the Galgen cop. You were almost done. That's better than crashing a tear garden, huh? I the Did you really? <laughs> oh, no. uh, speaking of the crash at Tear Garden, this is gonna also get some upgrades. Yeah, so the Cooper, we figure we'll take this opportunity. The, a lot of stuff has to come apart anyways. So we're gonna take the opportunity to build this thing up and it's actually quite similar to what we've done on, or are doing to the M2. Mm -hmm. Full set of bushings, JRZ RS Pro suspension. Uh, the cage and the seats have already been ordered. The six point harnesses have already been ordered. And, uh, just go through the whole car and really uh, prep it. It's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a phenomenal car when it's all done. It was already actually probably our best rental, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Until this happened. Yeah. So with these upgrades in it, the it's gonna be phenomenal. The mm -hmm. setup's gonna be amazing. Um, you've seen what Tilo can do with his, uh, you know, with his Cupra. And there's gonna be very few differences between this and his car when it's all done. That's a straw. That actually looks like the frame to a headlight. I don't think you should be playing with it. Let me see it. Let me see it. What does that look like? 
That's the frame to the headlight. It used to go right here. It used to be somewhere right about there. And then it went. And that's what the, the really pretty lights came through. But we're going to stick it right here, okay? Yeah, and then we're going to go with um, 18 inch wheels on this as well. And in fact, I want to do it to the M4 as well. So basically, yeah. next year I want to have the GT86, the Cupra, the M2, and the M4 all at a full track spec. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are more performance cars, there are faster cars, and it's going to make them that much more fun. Because when we do that, the back seats come out, the in, a lot of the interior comes out. So you're also going to get some road noise, you're going to get some exhaust notes, you're going to get more, possibly more intake noise coming through. And it's going to make the cars feel uh, a lot more exciting as well. Yeah. Which I think is a big part of it. Yeah. Very looking forward to it. And I'm pretty sure you as well. Some sneak peek into next year's plans and also uh, answering your questions. What are we going to do over winter when the track is closed? Building. So lots of engineering content, I would say. Yeah, I think so. I think it's tough because we always want to have new stuff and we need to be excited because we do this really a big part of it just for fun and we need to also be entertained with it. Let me check on Max real quick. Was that lift off oversteer? I think that was. Yeah. yeah it does lift off oversteer. Um, so we, we want to we have fun with it as well. But at the same time, at the same time, I don't want to just keep buying cars just to have cars. Yeah. We need to have cars that we want, cars that we're excited about. And I think that we have a pretty good selection right now and I'm not after a 20 car fleet. That's true. So if we have a 20 car fleet, it just gets too much to maintain, too much to keep on top of. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you lose that personal touch with the customers when they come in. So um, I think that right now, this winter, we have a couple new cars coming, but that'll be the limit of it more than that. And yeah. What we have and make them more special. Yeah, looking forward to that. In the meantime, Annalise, you want to go get some breakfast? Oh, I definitely want to get some breakfast. Pooch out. It's past 11, so unfortunately pancakes was not an option. So we're going semi-healthy today with Caesar salad. Uh, compensating with fries though. And waiting for Diana. Mm. And already managed to do a lap with the 218. The breakfast was yummy, obviously. With Daniel all the way from Chile. Chile yeah. yeah. So how did you end up here? I come to study in Cologne. Okay. So I will be a few months and obviously you have to it, come it, to it, the was, it, it was just an excuse like, oh, I have a possibility <laughs> to be an exchange student in Germany. Uh, there's never never crane, so... Where, where could I go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you have a, a nice restaurant? <laughs> That's very cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Marvin with his loud diesel... Uh, Kangoo. Well, I hope you enjoyed our lap. Thank you. Yeah, yeah me too. Really and you also have a, your own YouTube channel, so you can probably check yeah. out the lap somewhere in the description below. Thank Make you. sure to send it to me in time. And uh, yeah, well, I wish you more you. fun and safe laps. I'll just do some car spotting in between. See you later. See you later. Yeah, so we have this Rentec C Coupe that we seen already at Rentec and the AMG GT of Lucas is here. So maybe maybe that I will get to do some laps that he promised me like in the course of the year who knows maybe today is the good day who knows then here Alpina B4 by Turbo very nice car very interesting livery I haven't seen something it's not really traditional Alpina livery some Mustang games oh Shelby hmm luckily it's pointing the other way so we're safe to walk past it and then the Polo R the 993 that's interesting Castrol themed Race car themed Audi, not really common. Ooh, what happened to you, poor fella? Hmm, poor guy. Well, I hope it will buff out. You should use plasters, not duct tape. But then again, if you cannot fix it with duct tape, you cannot fix it at all. And I'll fast forward back to Apex. And the moment that we've been waiting for, the Cupra is being picked up to get restored by Man Heller. Oh, look at that. That's, and look at that. That's random. Interesting. Yeah, I will get back to that in a moment because one of the bi one of those bikes belongs to Ben, who wants to be the youngest fella who's gonna travel around the world on a bike. So we're gonna just let me quickly uh, say goodbye to those guys. Give me emotional face. <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye, Cupra, and goodbye, M3, just going out for some laps. 
Hello, Tim. Goodbye, Robert. Hello, Renault. <laughs> and hello, Ben. How are you doing? Good to see you, man. So, tell us more about your story. Yeah, I'm currently riding around uh, the world on my little Honda CRF 250. Started off in London, headed down France, um, down to south of France, along the French Riviera, mm. over the Alps into Italy, yeah. uh, to Genoa, Turin, and back into Switzerland. Did a bit of Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, and then a mate of mine. Uh, who I met in Switzerland said, oh, you got to see Billy in the, the Nürburgring. <laughs> so I came up The one here. and only Nürburgring biker blog. Came all the way up here in the pouring rain. Um, well, should have been only like a few hours, to be like nine hours. And then now I'm here, so I'm actually only like four hours from back home. It's taking me almost two months. So you're going to like travel all the continents? I'm, I'm going to hope, I'm going to hope to. I mean, yeah. I don't know about Antarctica. It depends when I get to, uh, <laughs> when I get to Ushaya. You know, Perfect. Yeah, get a little yacht across. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go through Europe, so I've got a chance of Billy, I'm going to do, do Poland next, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and then head down, Czech Republic, mm -hmm. um, Austria, Hungary, Romania, uh, all the way down, follow the coast down to Greece, and then into Turkey, Iran, Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, possibly Afghanistan, if I can pop in for a bit. Um, <laughs> for a bit. <laughs> and then into Pakistan, India, Nepal, China, <laughs> up the Karakoram Highway to Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan into Kazakhstan, into Russia, into Mongolia, back into Russia, do Siberia, <laughs> uh, over to Magadan, the Road of Bones, uh, and down to Vladivostok, South Korea, Japan, down to Hong Kong, ship from Hong Kong to the States, up to Alaska, to the northernest point, uh, Prudhoe Bay, and then back down Canada, down the States, Central America, South America, down to Ushaya, the southernest point. If I can get to Antarctica, if I can find a boat, and I can pop it on, put the, it's such a light bike, I can put it onto the boat, get it to there, that'd be quite cool. And then after that, New Zealand, over to Australia, Cairns, round to, da uh, round to Darwin, over to East Timor, island hop through uh, Indonesia, through the islands to Singapore, and then ship over to South Africa, all the way up Africa, through Morocco, back to Europe, and then that's my, uh, that's my loop. Well, we, we're about to check out his bike to see if he's well prepared for that, but his ge geography skills are definitely top notch. Yeah. I'm like, do those countries even exist? Okay, well, let's check out your bike. So, this is it. There she is. There she is. So, I've actually got another bag here with all my camping gear. Mm -hmm. And I've got another bag on top here. Mm -hmm. And then I fill my rucksack. So, I've got about seven bags or so, so total. So, what are the essentials that you take with you in your bags? Like, what's the. To be fair, most of this isn't even. This is all, this, this is all luxury. It's all like gadgets. So I've got a drone in here. Okay. I've only flown it twice so far and I've crashed it both times. Yeah. So I've just ordered some new propellers. Yeah. So the most then important bit for, uh, for uh, yeah, yeah the, uh, I mean something else important bit for my audience since you have a drone, I presume you take that footage and upload it somewhere. So yeah. you have like social media pages where you where yeah, people can so follow. My, um, my name is Ben King, so my trip's called The King on the Road. Okay. So my Facebook is Ben King on the Road. Yeah. Uh, my Instagram is The King on the Road. Yeah. Uh, and then my website is TheKingOnTheRoad.com. Yeah, you can find them all in the description of this video below. So make sure to follow him because damn, I mean. I'm kind of jealous of you. What, what what takes you to just decide like you're 21, right? Yeah, I'm 21. Yeah. When I was when I was 17, I crashed my car. Back okay. In, uh, back in the UK, um, and uh, that sort of changed everything. I ended up leaving the, the UK, moved to Asia, lived out there for a little while, yeah. and then got a motorbike and travelled around Asia on a bike. Yeah. Um, then lived in Vietnam, sort of working on old classic motorbikes. Um, the money made from that, I then went to South America, mm -hmm. bought another bike in Colombia. And bike down, didn't get to the bottom because I actually crashed my bike again. Yeah. Um, and so I had to get buses the rest of the way. And then it was I met bikers when I was in South America. Mm -hmm. And all the stories they they were doing the Alaska to Argentina trip, and it sounded incredible. So I thought I want to do something like that one day. Um, so I came back to the UK, and then uh, a good friend of mine, India, she passed away, um, and she was only 22. So I thought I could. And she died from Crohn's disease, and so I wanted to raise awareness and raise some money for Crohn's. So I thought I could ride from the UK to India because um, that was her name, but then I thought I want to do the Americas, I want to do Russia, I want to do all these, so in the end I thought well, let's just do the whole world. And then I realised that no one sort of my age has ever gone around the world solo and unsupported at, at 21, so if I get that record that'd be quite sweet. <laughs> We're saying that, it's taken me two months to get four hours from Yeah, London, from home, so yeah. It might be another ten years or so before I do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how, that's how the trip came about. And then I, I looked at getting a bigger bike, I looked at the F800 GS and the Triumph Tiger XGA. 
but they were just, I'm the skinniest person you'll ever meet. And I just couldn't, I couldn't lift it up, I couldn't even move the bike. So I looked at the 250 and for me it's perfect. Even this is too heavy for me to lift up as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, with all the luggage on it's insane, but yeah, it's great. What's the weight of uh, it with the luggage? Oh, I have no idea what it is with the luggage. I have okay. no clue, but the, it's... Well, it's yeah, probably it's close to the, probably like 300-ish, 200, yeah. 250. 160 is it? Just the bike and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If hmm. I ditched all my electrics, it'd be fine. I could just go hmm. minimalistic, but I've got all, all, all these luxuries. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so I reckon maybe yeah, maybe in ten years time, maybe I'll be back. Well, hopefully back. sooner. But I mean, it's it's not about the destination; it's about the journey. Exactly. Yeah. And I've met so many people already. I've met everywhere I go. I just keep meeting cool people, yeah. um, which is why it's taking me so long to get down here. I spent like <laughs> ten days in a little village in Provence, just with all the locals, and then yeah, hoping to get a little lap on this. I went yeah, a few days ago on the Corvette. One positive thing: you can go straight through Arden Force with this bike, so that's cool. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Cool, well, thank you for an amazing story. I wish awesome. you lots of Thanks luck. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. And uh, again, make sure to follow this guy on all the social media pages before. And since we're talking about laps, go do some lap with them too, testing all those upgrades. I think you practiced that. What's that? To like enter the track. <laughs> that was like very smooth movement. With... <laughs> we barely stopped. I would almost say it's like a Le Mans, Le Mans. Le Mans entrance. But yeah, nothing special here, just testing them to after. They get new brake pads, right? Yeah, new brake pads, yeah. Yeah, so need to pet and, them in. And some suspension adjustments. Yeah, yeah, so just, just some testings. Well, that was pretty nice it's very exciting and pleasant to see the progress that this car and all of our cars have been making and that makes me even more exciting for, uh, to see all those mods that we told you earlier today to be installed later in the winter and since this vlog kind of is dedicated to them too I want to show you something maybe you know it already probably people who are real petrol hats and like uh, watch every YouTube video possible they probably know it did you know that the M2 has kind of a poser sound mode? So now the car is just in stock, nothing is engaged, no Sport Plus, nothing, nothing. So listen to this. This is kind of typical meh, but if you press the traction button once, so not keep it pressed, but just press it once, so then the car goes in a traction mode. Listen to the exhaust now. And those and this nice barbell only happens if you rev it up to 4000 rpm if you do it more than that then nothing happens yeah so this is a bit of a yeah well 
piece of information, a bit of strange, but of course, probably many people are gonna agree with me that those barbell just should be standard without pressing any malt or have it at least more obvious because now it's traction button like oh why what how but yeah makes no sense but thank you at least for that and i'm very looking forward to uh if this car gonna get the gorilla exhaust how it's gonna sound then again well you all know by now how it sounds on the up i'm pretty sure that this is gonna make the, this car completely awesome Actually, I think I'm gonna finish this vlog here because tomorrow me and Tim have to go to UK to pick up Diana's car, so I have to do a lot of things to uh, take care of, to prepare. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog and see you guys tomorrow when, <laughs> I don't know, a lot of adventure gonna happen because this is something really I'm looking forward to. So, have a, a nice day and see you tomorrow. Bye! Our next location, which is our current location, was McLaren Manchester 1, where we currently are. And the next challenge has probably to do something with that. It was like an unscheduled visit. And we were actually for quite a long time interested in acquiring a P1 GTR. Oh, can I have your phone number? Okay, oh, yeah, here's Mr. Mitchell's number. Okay, I'm gonna call him in a bit. So, you'll be offered a P1 GTR in a bit, just so you know it. Who knows, maybe Robert gets to buy a P1 GTR.